hello. You want to say hello? Ooh, missed you. Okay, I'm going again. Oh well. Hi everyone. Um, I am finally ready to do the uh, Q&A that I had asked you about for the 200 subscribers. Now we're at like, I think 260 or so, which is kind of surreal to me. Um, but yeah, I'm finally there. Um, the background is a lot prettier <laughs> than in my own home. Um, we're currently quarantining in the UK. Um, so, and that's the dog of my in-laws, um, who you just saw. Anyway, um, okay, let's start. So, Cheryl Stevens asked, what is your line of work and what is your degree in? Um, so at the moment I am still studying English and American literature and linguistics and I'm also teaching English and German to adults to like, um, you know, like private companies and so on. Um, I used to work a lot in bars for like probably 10 years or so, but uh, that's over now. So um, yeah, that's what I do for work. Um, do you or did you play any sports? Uh, that is the, oh sorry, the question is by Misa from Books and Sushi. Um, not really. <laughs> um, I do a bit of yoga, but at the moment um, I have a lot of joint problems, so I'm not doing anything. Um, I used to do quite a lot of stuff as a child, like gymnastics and ballet and judo and swimming and all sorts. Um, but not so much anymore. I should get more into swimming though. Anyway, next one. Uh, Bookish asks uh, four very odd questions to be used or not used, whatever I want. Favorite Hobbit? I don't have one, I'm afraid. <laughs> I only read The Hobbit and then uh, never got into The Lord of the Rings, so no clue. Um, favorite work of art? How? Are you supposed to answer that favorite work of art? Are we talk first of all? Are we talking um, you know fine art? Or are we talking any kind of art? I don't know. What can I say? Music? Can I say something with music? What do you think, Joe? Maybe visual. Visual piece, art. Piece of art, maybe, or, or type of art. It says work of art. Well, the work of art, I guess that's like a painting. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm, I don't know very much about art at all. Um, I'm just one of those uh, idiots who can just say, oh yeah, I like this. <laughs> that's it. Um, I used to really, really love Dali, which is probably very predictable. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's what I liked. Or well, still do, actually. Um, there was one painting that was really moving, which I was not uh, expecting when I went to the Picasso Museum. Um, I was forced to go there. It wasn't even my choice, but I loved it. But it was some, it was a portrait in his blue face, but I wouldn't know now which one it is. So I guess I, this answer is rather, rather unsatisfying. Um, this is all favorite place. I don't know. Probably by the sea, right? because I love the noise that the sea makes. By the way, it's raining on top of the conservatory. I don't know if this is too loud or not. Um, yeah, somewhere by the sea. Maybe on the rocks in Menorca, having the waves lap up against the... Um, sorry, storage ran out, so I um, have to come back again now. Uh, what is... So we stopped at favorite place, so yeah. Somewhere by the sea, probably Menorca, by the rocks. Um, but I'm sure there might be a different one on a different day. Favorite beer? <laughs> I think it's a toss up between a good pils. It's got to be a good one though. Or what is that called? It's a pilsner, isn't it in English? I don't know. I think it's the same. And a Guinness, a well poured one, like that sounds really basic, but that's, I think that's my favorite beer. 
all these special ones they can be kind of nice every so often but it wouldn't be something that i drink on a regular basis and a lot of them i think are ridiculous <laughs> and i really don't like ipas <laughs> okay so then Yere at drawn to stories asks what kind of music do you like to listen to and what kind of music do you like to play or sing um what do i listen to uh lots of stuff when my <laughs> husband asked me this question when we first met I told him that I didn't like the question because because it's too limiting and I find it difficult to like you know properly answer it but I guess probably the most what do we listen to the most what do I listen to the most indie rock folk singer songwriter um bit of progressive rock which you don't like so much um what else that's kind of the main thing isn't it a bit of classical music sometimes um yeah that sort of thing um what what is it what was the next one what kind of music do you like to play or sing um i don't really play music anymore which is a shame probably get into it again so i used to play the piano for a long long time um but i'm very out of practice and back then i learned you know like classically trained blah 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 so i would usually play classical music and a bit of pop music or whatever um i think my most recent foray into trying to play something was ludovico einaudi you know with more or less success i think he has way longer fingers than i do and obviously more skill um yeah and then singing well i don't think i'm the best singer but i do think i'm okay at holding a tune um so what kind of songs yeah it's it's the same stuff that i like to listen to isn't it what we sing when we do hmm? what kind of music do i like to sing or play yeah, it's like the same kind of music that we listen to, and your music, yeah, it's pretty much. and your my my husband um, writes songs, so I have uh, sung a, a few background vocals. Again, not necessarily very well. <laughs> okay, and then oh, he asks another question: What are your favorite German artists bands? And I've I really struggle to answer this. I think I don't listen to any German music. Um, the closest I would get to is something that I used to listen to when I was maybe around 18, 19 or so, that there was like the odd German hip hop band I liked, even though I'm not really into hip hop, but I liked Blumentopf and Fanta Fear, um, because they have kind of also a bit more, I don't know, intelligent lyrics, they're kind of funny. Um, but other than that, not really into most of the German music scene. Or well, I mean, obviously also, I don't really know it, yeah, sorry. Another unsatisfying answer. Mark Nash, who plays the guitars in the background? Well, and what music see above is your take? Oh, yeah, wait. What? Okay, sorry. Mark Nash asks who plays the guitars in the background. So the guitars are my husband's. I don't know how to play the guitar, apart from like, you know, the odd chord or something. Um, every so often you've seen a bass in there. That was mine, which I used to play. Not so much anymore for several reasons. One being that the skin on my fingers is incredibly sensitive and has been for quite a few years and it gets absolutely shredded when I play bass, at least the ones on my right hand. Um, and then the music I've answered, I guess, and then is your music taste similar to your husband's? Um, I think we have a lot of overlap and then there's a few things where he's really not into that I like. For example, Tool is one of the big ones where I dragged him to a concert once. And then a few things that he's more passionate about that I'm just sort of like, yeah, it's okay, you know. Um, but otherwise, I think we have a huge overlap in music taste, don't we? He's not listening. Just imagine he said yes. Okay, next question. Bamboo Jones, not a specific question, but I would like to know more about your cat. He likes to scamper, climb and check out the camera while you're filming. 
makes his presence felt and it's just lovely so um there's two cats actually i don't know which one you've seen i think well they've both been in videos before so um they're both rescue cats from bulgaria um the dark tabby one is bandit and he's the proper alpha male and he's um very naughty he's you know it, it fits his, it befits his name and aladdin is a little uh runty cat who's um gingerly beige he is really really snuggly and recently he's been very obsessed with pawing at me at all times um yeah so they're both rescues from bulgaria um aladdin was found by himself in a car park crying <laughs> and bandit was um found with his um, litter mates also you know without the mother as when he was also a tiny kitten still um yeah there's a lovely woman who does this cat rescue um, in varna in bulgaria and she basically does this sort of as a almost it's like almost a one woman show and um yeah she tirelessly cares for these lovely cats um yeah they've been with us when did they come 2018 yeah so we've had them for a little, a little bit over three years now yeah i think that's probably enough to tell you um then the next one also by bamboo jones i used to live in taoya in taiwan from 94 to 96 that's really cool and still miss much hypothetical question if you could visit in a post lockdown situation what would be the first thing you would want to do so taoyan is actually also where my mother is from in taiwan so it's a place it's an area that we, we go to every time when we come there um i have one uncle who lives relatively close to the airport and he is he, it's usually his his um obligation to pick up anybody you know any family visitor so normally what we do then the first thing is um you, we land very early in the morning there and we'd always stop off at either we stop off, stop off at a restaurant uh, not restaurant well a breakfast place and get um a few items like um Lobo gao and some baozi or something like that or sometimes we go straight home to his uh, to his home and uh, my aunt who have made the most amazing um song you're being um that are filled and we'll have that and that's kind of the first food i always have when i end up in taiwan and then usually i have a shower and go sleep go to sleep <laughs> for a few hours um yeah and i think i wouldn't change that if i went back now or oh, well post lockdown okay next question remembered reads what's the weirdest book you've ever read weirdest film you've ever seen and favorite piece of lowbrow literature oh, i feel like i should have prepared for this weirdest book i've read the odd weird book haven't i i'm not sure does that count can i just say the last one that was very experimental um i read this book that with, with this incredibly long title it's like personal property and artifacts or something of Linwood Doolin and Harold Morris including <laughs> street fashion and jewelry something like that by Leanne Chapton which is a novel told in pictures basically in the form of an auction catalogue um, but the other one that's also rather weird is the one that I've also mentioned a couple of times no, which is B.S. Johnson's the unfortunates oh i think somebody's coming the unfortunates because it's a book that isn't bound all the chapters are individual and you can mix and match them you can like shuffle them around and then read them in whatever order it ends up in what's the weirdest film i've ever seen maybe antichrist by lars von trier it's the first one that came to mind anyway favorite piece of no yeah lowbrow literature i don't know what is lowbrow literature i mean i'm assuming it's well obviously not you know whatever is considered to be in the higher echelons of intellectual 
intellectually valuable literature, but then um, I might just say my all time favorite thing that I keep mentioning is Terry Pratchett's Discworld novels. That's pretty lowbrow, isn't it? But he's brilliant. I love him. I'm going to take that one. Courtney Ferreter asks, best and worst books you've recommended books you've read? Wow, that's that's a good one. And that was actually, I had an idea about doing a tag or something or a series along those lines, but I haven't done it. So some of the best ones that I can remember off the top of my head are Milkman, Emma Burns. Um, this year it was Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. Then um, what else was there that was amazing? I read only recently, I read Sitting Pretty, which was an amazing memoir, which I would not have found out about otherwise. Um, yeah, those are the first ones that come to mind. Then worst, well, there is one that takes the cake. And I and luckily, I can't remember wh which recommendation it was, you know, for like on what channel I'd seen it. Otherwise, maybe I'd harbor some ill feelings. <laughs> it was Vox. I can't remember the name of the author. I think it was something Christina, something, something. Um, terrible book, one star. And I, I don't think I've given any other book one star in, you know, since I've started rating them. Absolutely terrible, do not waste your time. I love the premise and it was a complete letdown. Um, terrible writing, stereotypical, deus ex machina, resolving of issue and just ridiculous sorry to say yeah that's the absolute worst one um otherwise i'm usually relatively lucky with my choices so far okay next one gunpowder fiction and plot are asking what is the best and worst thing about living in germany mm -hmm. Whew, what's the best thing maybe bread <laughs> the right. bread's really good yeah the bread's very, very good. The beer is good, but it's not as amazing as the bread, I think. A lot of it. And I guess the relative safety is very good. I mean, I'm not saying it's the safest country ever, but yeah, the relative safety for a city is quite, yeah. What's the worst thing? Germans tend to be quite rude. They're not all rude also, that's not the case, but they can be quite rude. Although I also like straightforwardness. I'm more, you know, I'm somewhere in between. Is that the worst thing about Germany? Or maybe the German bureaucracy is absolutely yeah, terrible. Yeah, yeah the, the, the bureaucracy is no fun. And that we're so behind the times with regards to digitalization, which we've all seen during this pandemic. Um, yeah, let's, let's leave it at that. If dogs could read, what book would you recommend them? Uh, if dogs could read, but if dogs could read, would they then want to read something that reflects them? So would it then not have to be a book also written by a dog? I mean, if they could read, I'm assuming they could write a book, couldn't they? Am I taking this too literally? Am I taking this too literally? Mm -hmm. But I can't think of another I have read a book that was from the perspective of a dog, though. Very sad. It was Paul Auster's Timbuktu. I liked it. It was very sad. That I would not recommend that to a dog, though. Unless they want a good cry, maybe. Or maybe they would like to see their, you know, their struggles reflected, and then that would be a good choice. Let's leave. <laughs> let's, let's get that one. <laughs> okay. Mel at Mel's Bookland Adventures asks, favorite thing about the city you live in and least favorite thing about the city you live in well we can go back to uh, germans no <laughs> that is actually true i think my least favorite thing about the city i live in is the rudeness of the people there because that is that's what i said you know not all germans are rude but in this area where we live in they tend to be very rude <laughs> and they're very closed off like it's quite difficult to meet new people from that area Usually they say, right, if you meet, if you then really make friends with them, then you have a friend for life. And I, you know, I believe that I've made two friends from there who are like among my best friends. 
but it's super difficult if you you know if you move in as a new person and um, so that's kind of not not the most likable aspect of the city and the people there what's my favorite thing there safety. well safety is that really my favorite thing though okay. i like that there's vineyards all around but I like that, you know, when you look around, you're not just seeing concrete in front of you and then you can't see anything else. You can always see the hills everywhere around where there's vineyards and there's trees and stuff like that. I like that about it. But that also comes with the negative part of being in a valley where there's absolutely no fresh air in the summer. <laughs> yeah. And it's very close to a lot of lovely destinations. That's also nice. Um, okay, Book Time with Elvis is asking, what were some alternative names for your channel that you came up with? I have no good answer for this because this uh, beating around the books was one of my, possibly my first thought, because I'd already rejected the idea of using my own name in it. Um, yeah, no, sorry. I know you have a good alternative title, don't you, Mark? <laughs> Anyway, I'll leave you to that, really reveal that though. Um, next question, also book, also Mark from Book Time with Elvis. If you had to make YouTube videos, what on a subject other than books or reading, what would your channel be about? I think it would probably be about food. Um, not that I would be very good at it because our kitchen is tiny and I would not be able to actually fit the equipment in there, and also I would probably not be organized enough to do so. But that's probably, you know, a close second in terms of my interests after reading. What do you think, Joe? Mm, Food? Travel. travel. Yeah, but I wouldn't, but, yeah, no, but the travel thing though, I would not want to keep r running around vlogging. That's not my yeah. thing. Even though I love watching people, you know, travel documentaries, but I wouldn't want to make them. I think food. Pretty sure. Um, Where's the first place you plan to travel to for holiday purposes once you're free to do so? It would probably be either Menorca or Venice or Taiwan. What do you think? Those three. I'm not sure which one. Because Taiwan is, well, ta Taiwan is mainly because my grandmother is quite old. And we haven't been able to see her. I'm sorry, is this, is this too loud? Maybe too loud. Well, we'll see. Okay, and then lastly, Roz at Scavidan thing about the books. Should I pause? Yeah, that was a test and trace call. So we have one last question here from Roz at Scaladandling about the books. You read in two languages. How does that affect your reading experiences? This is also a super interesting question, but it's so difficult to answer. I don't know. Like, because I've not... How do you know that it affects you when you don't have, you know, any sort of other experience? Um... You know, there's not another copy of me that reads only in one language that I could compare notes with. Um, how does it affect my reading experiences? So I tend to prefer to read any English books only in English and not in the translated German version nowadays. And the same goes for German books. I'd rather read them in the original um, because I always have this sort of feeling that, you know, maybe something will get lost in translation. Um, but of course, you know, any of the other languages, I can't read those. Um, so then I have to rely on a translation. This is one that is one thing that's actually difficult. I always <laughs> struggle to decide whether I should read an English translation or a German one. Um, I have done what I've done recent, well, recently, last year at some point, or maybe the year before that. Um, I was looking extensively into Kafka translations because uh, Jaws had um, uh, expressed an interest in reading the trial and I thought specifically, I mean generally there's always you know this difficulty with how good is the translation but obviously Kafka 
there's so many of them and they are they do vary quite a lot and i was trying to figure out which one might be the best one so i kept reading these sort of sample paragraphs <laughs> you know in the original and then in like five different translations but it was kind of futile i never really came to a conclusive answer anyway and then i bought you a, a copy didn't i and i got the wrong one I got the wrong translation, the one that I didn't want. Anyway, how does it affect me? Um, I think maybe one thing that happens sometimes I do, you know, whilst I'm reading, I do wonder, like, how would this be translated? And how would that, you know, ooh, that must be difficult to, you know, convey in this other language and stuff like that. And recently I've been body reading um, Judith Chalansky's Verzeichnis einiger Verluste which is an inventory of losses um, with Kieran from KD Books. And obviously he was reading the English version and I was reading the German. Um, and I asked him to send me a few, like, you know, screenshots or not, sorry, photos of certain passages because I was really interested in how it translates. And funnily enough, I felt like A, it was quite well translated, but B, I felt like it was almost easier for me to read the English one than the German and I don't know if that's down to the actual language level or whether it's because I'm out of practice you know in German I don't know this is not a good answer is it this is just me rambling now about two languages anyway I'm not sure how it how it affects me but I do think a lot about language in itself um because I just find it very fascinating. Um Yeah. Maybe it makes me appreciate a good language a good translation. That certainly. I don't know. I think I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> don't think I have a better answer. Um anyway, thank you so much for all the lovely questions. There were some really interesting ones there and difficult ones. Um, if you've watched till this, uh, this end, you know, I don't know how you bring up the patience, but thank you very much. Um, yeah, please uh, comment below. Maybe you have other experiences of reading in two languages or more. That would be super interesting. Um, you might be more reflected than I am. And um, I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> you getting dinner?